Thank you. You know, first, let's, although we're going to get to education questions, I'm sure, later. Yes. Um, let's be clear that I've never said I wanted to abolish the Department of Education, and Congresswoman Tice would just use that uh, to try to scare you even further. Uh, it's interesting that she wants to control the, uh, the debt when she voted for every appropriations bill that came through uh, Congress last year. And in fact, the PAYGO provision not only allows you to perhaps offset by uh, spending restraint, but also allows you to raise taxes to offset the cost of any new programs. Uh, the debt that we face is critical to the we're mortgaging the future of our children and grandchildren with wasteful spending and these job killing policies. And if we want to control the debt, then we have to stimulate the economy. We have to get back to creating jobs because that will grow our gross domestic product. We'll get back to a three to three and a half percent GDP where we were prior to the current recession. We'll see more revenue come in. We'll see more tax dollars come in and we'll be able to pay off the debt that has been accumulated under the wasteful, poli wasteful spending policies over the last two years. Uh, so I think the issue really comes back to jobs and the economy. And that's how we're going to control our debt, by putting people back to work and allowing them to keep more money in their own pockets. Dr. Beck, earlier this year, Congress passed the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Is a law. Some small business owners have raised concerns about increasing costs associated with the law's uh, coverage mandates, while others have praised the act, um, particularly for its small business tax credits for health care provision. Um, how do you believe Nevada businesses will ultimately be affected by the act? Well, I think there will be some that may think it would be beneficial, and others, like you mentioned, think it would be somewhat detrimental because the credits that are offered phase out rather quickly. Once you have more than 10 employees or you're over a certain uh, payment, uh, salary of your employees, those credits start to wear off rather quickly. In addition, the credits are not in perpetuity. They're only for the first several years of the enactment of the bill. And the problem, again, is that we see people trying to take money away from the bottom line of small margin businesses and every dollar taken away to meet a regulatory burden, which is also in the bill. Rather than talk about the tax credits, what about the requirement that every business have to issue a 1099 for services or goods that they purchase over $600 uh, in the course of a year? Uh, there's other requirements to make sure that you report the value of health insurance on your W-2 forms. These are onerous burdens on small business owners that will need to retool the way that they do business to be in compliance. And that means they're going to have less money for the next pay raise, less money to hire the next worker. Uh, so in general, I believe that while there are some small businesses that may benefit from these tax credits, overall, the most of the small businesses in Southern Nevada will see this as another onerous burden that will prevent them from growing their business and being successful here in our state. You know, you're well, thank you. you know, Senator Mack, you're entitled to your own opinion, but not to your own facts. Let's just get the facts about the health care bill. Uh, right under the health care bill, any business that has fewer than 50 employees is not bound by any of these provisions. I went and spoke to a group of Century 21 folks, and they were kind of hesitant and wanted to know more about the health care bill. And when I told them if you have fewer than 50 employees, it doesn't even affect you, they kind of said, oh, well, I didn't realize that. But if you do have fewer and you want to provide benefits, then you get a very substantial tax credit to help you provide those benefits. So let's be sure we get all those tax credits. Also, in addition, we will create a national pool that small businesses can buy into that will have lower rates if that's something that they choose to do. And remember, many of these small businesses are owned by women and by minorities who don't have other options or can't afford to provide insurance because insurance rates for small businesses increase twice as fast as those for large businesses. They have doubled in the last 10 years and will double again in the next 10 years if something's not uh, done about it. Now this is not written in stone like the Ten Commandments. It can continue to be worked on and perfected. For example, the 1099 provision. Senator Heck knows good and well I voted against that and it passed in the House version. We can go back and readdress that. But when I talk to people in the district, what I hear is many of them say, without that bill having passed, I couldn't cover children who have diabetes. I couldn't make Medicare solvent for more years now. I couldn't improve on the Medicare Advantage programs. 
I couldn't keep gender from being something that you use to discriminate against people. to go to college, an increase in Pell Grants so more people would have 